Angela Evans, your 6th District Council member, and today we have Shannon Smith from the American Heart Association here to talk to us about uh, healthy living and heart health and why it's so important to uh, women specifically, uh, but then all of Lexington. So Shannon, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. Well, first I want to start off with um, some sombering or sobering um, facts, specifically about um, African American women, yes. which obviously is important to me about heart health. And unfortunately, um, I had a very fr a close friend pass away from a heart episode. Um, but I noticed such an important issue for all women, but specifically African American women, um, that statistics show, and I think I got these from, from the, the website uh, from AHA, but um, African -American, American women specifically have twice as much risk as Caucasian women of a stroke. That, that's true. It is true. Wow. And you're right, it is a staggering statistic. And I offer condolences for your friend. It's far too often we hear that story mm -hmm. and there are things that we can do to help um, you know, fight that disease and really reverse the effects that some of our lifestyle choices have on women and especially on African American women um, with the double risk that they yeah. they have. And uh, I've been to a couple of the Go Red Excellent. luncheons Good. We uh, love that. a couple of years, but uh, again with women specifically that you know the, the um, I guess the signs of, of heart issues or um, episodes are different. You know, why is it so specific or important for women specifically to know and take more more care of their heart and how can we we start doing that in our day-to-day -day life? Heart disease is the number one killer of women and we need to make sure that women understand how important their health is mm -hmm. and the steps that they can take to uh, to combat that disease and to prevent a stroke or heart disease from happening in the first place. So really reaching out to their physician, talking with their doctors, knowing the early, knowing the early signs, the warning signs of heart disease or stroke, uh, it's very, it's critical in, in assessing that their own health. So really making sure that they're talking to their doctor, meeting mm -hmm. regularly, having their annual exams right. is very important. So Shannon, can you tell us what your role specifically is at the American Heart Association and, and what AHA does in general? Sure. So I am the Government Relations Director for the State of Kentucky for the American Heart Association, which means that I help direct policy. Policy okay. that helps people choose, make healthier choices. Okay. Well, uh, we all need help with that because right. it's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> the mission yeah. of the American Heart Association is longer, stronger, healthier lives for everyone. Okay. Nationwide, worldwide, citywide, statewide, everyone. And what I do is help to help legislators like yourself write and create policy and pass policy that helps that become reality, helps us encourage others to live a healthier, stronger lifestyle. Okay. So that's what I do specifically yeah. for Kentucky. Okay. And so what are some of the things uh, specifically in Kentucky, in Lexington, um, initiatives or uh, programs that have come up that yeah. you've worked on or that, that are in place now that we, we know that yes, we're doing this, not just because it sounds good, but there's yes. there's a healthy meaning behind it. Absolutely. Well, last year in the 2018 legislative session, mm -hmm. we passed telephone CPR, uh, which oh. is a, a huge benefit for all of the community. You can call, anyone can call 911, and over the phone they are taught how to do not CPR on anyone that needs to be uh, have that delivered to them. Okay. So that was a huge success and that passed last session, 2018, and just recently, a few days ago, uh, water bottle filling stations in newly constructed schools passed the legislature. So that will be a statewide initiative that okay. will ensure safe, healthy access to water 
uh, which we already have access to water in schools. Mm -hmm. This will just ensure they have access to bottle filling stations as well. Okay. Encourages the consumption of water for okay. children. Well, and you said more about policy and, yes. you know, Lexington, we're, we're getting really big on, on uh, bike trails and walking trails and, yes. and things like that. So, um, you yeah, know, we're trying to get people more, more active, but um, for those of us that are still driving and love to drive and um, you know quite I'll be quite honest I still get some complaints about um, you know from constituents about bikers and sure. um, cyclists let me not say biker <laughs> right but um, you know ensuring the road so we've become more active but uh, as you see it from an active active lifestyle and, and heart perspective why why is that a good thing so a healthy lifestyle uh, includes choices that we make every single day right so within our community we need access to safe walkable bikeable accessible streets for all modes of transportation so whether it's people walking people riding a bike people in wheelchairs people with any type of disability pushing a stroller um, maybe with a walker we need to ensure that this, there's safe access for all modes of transportation. And our planning commission and our Metro Council has done a fabulous job, along with our mayor, of ensuring those initiatives are being uh, sought after in Lexington, whether that means widening a sidewalk so that that encourages more walking, or including a crosswalk where possibly someone is trying to pick up public transit to get to work, mm -hmm. maybe to school, or including bike lanes or adding biking trails. Uh, our community is, is, is moving forward and, and very progressive about that. So hats off to you and okay. your planning commission uh, for including those initiatives. And um, again, that's about choices. And we also right. need to make sure that as a community, we're looking at the disinvested neighborhoods mm -hmm. and the underserved communities that for a while maybe haven't seen renovations in their streets and their neighborhoods. A lot of times those are the neighborhoods that people don't have access to vehicles. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that they do have safe access to public transit or grocery stores, mm -hmm. um, health care, daycare, their children's school. It's very important that those communities have safe, walkable streets. Okay, so it isn't just about, um, or there, there really is a, a heart issue. You know, it, absolutely, it is, uh, really about getting people more active in, in whatever way. Make, like you said, making it a part of, of their life, of their yes. their commute if they can. So that's so, right. Well, that that's good to know. Thank you for for the compliment for the planning department and, yes. and the commission. Um, because it is, we do have a population that loves it, um, but it's also good to hear from your perspective yes. that it, it really is more just about making it a nice city and it's not for a specific um, population that yeah. already enjoys that activity. It really is about getting more people to join in that. And you bring up a valid point, it's lifestyle, right? Yeah. It's about what lifestyle you choose, mm -hmm. and maybe it's not recreation for for a lot of people, it's probably not a recreation to walk to or from where they're, it's their mode of transportation. Mm -hmm. That's how they have to get there. And our elderly community, they need to feel safe as they are out mm -hmm. uh, trying to get to the pharmacy or getting to right. maybe see their neighbor next door, mm -hmm. that they need to have that safe access to. And it's about their lifestyle choices. All right. well, thank you. That's You're welcome. Know. So, you know, in, in the, uh, our eating choices, yes. um, how, what is the American Heart Association doing and um, what, what are some of the examples that you brought us to maybe help us encourage, encourage us to give a little more incentive about eating healthier and, yes. and how, how it can make a difference? So I get this question a lot when I bring up healthy vending, uh, that the American Heart Association has a healthy vending initiative. Like, why do you have a healthy mm. vending initiative? Well, because it's about those small choices that we can make each day that really impact our overall lifestyle and, and our yeah. health. Mm -hmm. So for example, okay. I'll show you a few things. Okay. So let's say you we'll choose say we'll to this. have a Coke, uh -huh. a snack at your desk, a Coke, and maybe a bag okay. of chips, okay? Oof. That's this is a small snack. It's a typical snack, right, for people right. to choose a, a mm -hmm. soft drink and a, and a bag of chips. Right. And in this right here, you have 400 calories. And these two items, you have 400 calories. Mm. A typical meal 
is around, you know, a, a health, healthy, well-balanced meal is somewhere around six to 700 calories. Right. So you've almost exceeded your meal right there, at least <laughs> over half of it. Whereas okay, you could make the choice. Soda, I can let go of the, these. These yeah, are a little trickier. Yeah, and, so. <laughs> and that's that's good because you can make one small change with this that really helps that. So you still want your tips, right? A lot of people yeah, still do. Yeah. That you can choose to take your bottle of water and just choose the bake lays. By yeah. choosing the bake lays, you have set. You are now down to 120 calories in this snack, which is a oh, okay. pretty typical snack. Your snack should stay six. under 200 yeah. calories. Okay. No snack should exceed 200 calories. That's okay. about the most that you should exceed. Okay. So let me let me share this too. So we're at 400 here, right? We're at mm -hmm. 120 here. Okay. You can. And this is probably for half of this bag. That, that is. These are both, but the yeah. calorie counts are both for one serving. Okay. okay. So that's one serving, half of the bag. You can add an orange to this snack. We're, we're now at 40 calories, approximately for an orange, 40 uh -huh. to 50. And you can add a kind bar. All of that, that's almost a meal. I'm going to say that right? looks like lunch. That could that, be lunch. That could be a good lunch. And you're mm -hmm. at 360 calories, still less than you are over here. Wow. Which is a, and then what if that's you threw, on, threw in another bag of chips later in the yeah, day? Yeah, that's somebody's afternoon right there. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's typical. So wow. if you take away some of the bad choices, just mm -hmm. a few of them, and you broke this up and had a bottle of water, and a bag of chips, mm -hmm. and then you had a kind barn and orange, or any type of, you know, low calorie, all natural type of granola bar mm -hmm. or fruit. It's it's a choice that you can make that really helps. And right. the healthy healthy vending initiatives tries to remove not all, but right. at least seventy five percent of the bad choices mm -hmm. and replace them with better choices. Okay. So healthy vending usually leaves about 25% in case it's that day that you just, just have to have your Doritos. You need something. You need your Doritos, okay. you need your Coke for that day. Mm -hmm. It leaves those in there for those options. Okay. So small decisions like that can really affect your overall health and, and weight, you know, obesity in mm -hmm. Kentucky. Um, the United, um, United Healthcare released their national health rankings. Mm -hmm. We were 49th. Kentucky was 49th. Oh wow! It's really bad. Our our smoking, mm -hmm. our disease, these diseases from smoking and obesity. It's really plaguing our state. And small choices. If you can save 400 calories a day, okay. you know that yeah. that really gets at that weight of right. things. Right. So well, and we talked about this before. So just to give a little more perspective, um, what. What would it take to burn off like oh, 400 yeah. approximately? Yeah. It's a great how many question. crunches? How many? So, <laughs> let's, so on a typical, let's say 150 pound person, huh? for about 150 pounds to burn 100 calories would take you about 15 minutes. So okay. that puts that into a perspective of your 400 calorie snack over here is close to an hour of vigorous activity just to burn off your snack. And vigorous meaning like cardio Means or cardio. Spinning. You are sweating. sweating you are hard. not. It's not a leisurely walk. Okay. Right. So a typical spin class, a 45 minute spin class is somewhere between 400 to 450 calories. And that's that's kind of the highest intensity you can uh, one of the yeah. that you can get to with calorie burn. So Okay. When you put it into that perspective, right, it mm -hmm. really makes you think, well, yeah. <laughs> how, how long am I going to have to? How much is it really worth? How yeah. many burpees do I have to do? <laughs> oh, goodness, burpees. <laughs> to, you you yeah. said the bad word. I know oh. I did. I said the B word bad, on bad, the B television. Word. I bad. apologize. <laughs> oh, God. But no, that, that is good to know. And, and yep. again, helps us. Because th these are things we, you know, we yep. know. We've all heard, um, you know, any of us that have, you know, tried to lose weight or, you know, change right. uh, go to a healthier eating lifestyle. So I have, these are things that we know, but it's always good to have the, the reminder. That's right. And the extra incentive. Um, and fad diets, you know, come and go. Right. But the lifestyle choices, those that's that's our goal, right, is to promote those healthy lifestyles mm -hmm. that's active living, good food choices, you know, good. good access to health care, those sorts of things.
things. Okay. Thank you so much for being here today and sharing with us um, how we can do better and be better, and it's the small choices uh, that, that matter. So I really appreciate you for coming. Well, thank you, and Go Councilwoman ahead. Evans, you are a true champion of our city, and I truly appreciate you and all that you do for the constituents and the encouraging of a healthy lifestyle and choices, yeah. and, and maybe you and I can to keep myself each other honest, together. Right? <laughs> That's right. Well, I appreciate you and what you do for our community, well, so thank you. Thank you. And thank you for having me today. Uh, absolutely, my pleasure. And thank you all for tuning in to Council Comment. I'm Angela Evans, your 6th District Council Member, and hope to see you soon. Thank you.